Father, we thank you for the hand of God that comes upon our assembly as a people that you have sent, Lord, to manifest your kingdom. We decree, Lord God, that we are those that facilitate the orchestration of Zion and all that she entails in the land. And that you'll begin to give us the strategies and the blueprints, Lord God, to develop a place that you will call your habitation, but also for the emerging of a people, Lord God, that you call your own. Uh, for it's in Zion, Lord God, that your fire dwells, uh, and so you make your ministers of flame and your messengers fire in Zion. Uh, and Father, we are decreeing a surge of Zion coming in the earth uh, and a manifestation of the power of this people uh, and a manifestation of the glory of this place uh, that you have called your own. Uh, we decree, Lord God, that there's a rise of the of these types of people all around the nations of the earth uh, and that you will cause Lord God the perfection of beauty to shine uh, out of Zion uh, and you will cause the dwellings of Zion to be a place uh, that attracts Lord God even that uh, which has been sanctioned by the eternal of old uh, we declare that in the name of Jesus Christ uh, and Father we decree that there's a coming uh, a new level of stamina Lord God and the rising uh, of a dimension of strength Lord God and you cause the people of breakthrough uh, to emerge in Zion uh, it's the city of the living being God and we declare Lord God that the strongholds of our land and the territorial powers uh, of our geographical grid shall be overturned uh, and Lord as David took the stronghold of Zion uh, and the same as the city of David uh, that within our territorial grid the city of the living God uh, shall manifest and the heavenly Jerusalem shall begin to come down uh, and there shall come the emerging of the angelic uh, and there shall come the movements of these beings uh, there shall come the provocations of these watchers uh, and there will come the flying in our midst uh, of these seraphims and cherubims uh, who have their eyes and the feet covered uh, and they shall move swiftly in the sanctuary. Uh, Father, we decree that there's coming a day, uh, and even in this time, Lord God, where there will be the revealing uh, of the burning of the sovereign one by way of the song to the Lord. Uh, but it is written in your word uh, that the, why do the heathen rage uh, and the people imagine vain things? Uh, is it not because of the Lord uh, and because of his, his anointed? Uh, but you've set your king upon your holy hill, uh, even Zion. Uh, and Father, we declare, Lord God, that there's an establishment of your throne uh, in Zion. Uh, it's the place where your government it begins to manifest uh, and it's the place where the rod of the scepter of your authority comes uh, over the nations of the earth uh, so let Zion arise uh, and let there come the deployment Lord God of those uh, who carry expertise and those uh, who are anointed Lord God to bring about times uh, of revival and reformation in the land uh, let the dwellings of Zion be known uh, in our cities and territories uh, and let your salvation be great in Zion uh, we declare that uh, in the name of Jesus Christ for it is written of Zion uh, that she is beautiful for situations she is the joy of the whole earth. Mount Zion is on the sides of the north. It is the city of the great king. And where sorrow has in, has sorrow has impeded the progression of a people. And where death and destruction, Lord God, have begun to ravage the nations. We declare that you raise up Zion. It is beautiful for situations. Zion is the joy of the whole earth. It is the city of the great king. And we declare, Lord God, that this city emerges within cities all around the nations of the earth. Where the powers of of destruction, uh, where the assignments, Lord God, of viruses, uh, where the provocations by way of diseases uh, have caused, Lord God, a screeching halt to come uh, to the kingdoms uh, and the systems of men. Uh, we prophesy Zion emerges uh, in our cities. Uh, it's that realm where you send us help uh, and you strengthen us. Uh, it's that realm where we can go from strength to strength. And all of us uh, can appear before God. Uh, let Zion emerge uh, and let Zion be known as the dwelling place uh, of the Most High God. Uh, let Zion churches uh, and Zion assemblies be raised up uh, all around the nations of the earth. Uh, let Zion, that realm where sons and daughters uh, are known as children that are born uh, and sent for signs and wonders. Uh, Father, let it begin to manifest uh, in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, we say let Zion arise uh, and let the King of glory descend. Uh, we say let there come the salvation of our nations and let Zion begin to rise and rejoice. We declare, Lord God, that in Salem also is your tabernacle and your dwelling is in Zion. Let the Prince of Peace be made manifest in Zion. For you raise up, Lord God, those that will publish peace in Zion upon the mountain of the Lord. We declare it over the nations. We say let there come a release of that realm into our generation. Let there come a resurgence of this supernatural eternal mandate 
within our territories and cities in the name of Jesus Christ. We declare, Lord God, that you will choose even that tribe known as Judah in the name of Jesus Christ. Or as in that realm, the Mount of Zion, which you love, emerges. And so let the praises arise. Let the worshipers arise. Anointed minstrels. Let there come the resurrection of the voice, Lord God, of psalmists who are prophets indeed, who will sing until your power comes upon the land, who will worship until your weighty presence is activated in territorial grids and miracles and signs and wonders are wrought among the people. Let Zion arise, the dwelling of the most high God. I decree it in Jesus' name. Say mighty words, mighty ones arise. Take your rightful place in Zion. In Zion. He's a cloud for you by day and a fire for you by night. In Zion. In Zion. He's gonna do it by his glory. Do it by his glory. Do it by his glory. House of prayer is now open and God is in control. I'm excited to invite you to Rivers Chicago online worship experience. I'm Pastor Robert Anderson. Rivers, the place of life and love, is here to serve you. We encourage you to start those watch parties and share, share the broadcast today. Our senior leader, Apostle Stephen Gardner, will continue with our July series, Zion, the dwelling place of God. Let us assemble so that we can ascend. Oh! 
us, we dwell we with you, believe, God. We believe you will open our faith is strong in you, Lord. Our faith is strong in you, Lord. Doesn't matter if sickness is happening. Doesn't matter if death is going on. We believe, we believe, we believe you are moving. You are moving in the midst of your of your people you are moving in the midst of your people you are moving in the midst of your people hey i'm moving in the midst of your people you are moving in the midst of your people stand up in your power jesus and move and move you're moving in the midst of your people with your power with your spirit god rise up Sunday service. Um, once again, we're dealing with the topic of Zion, a very exciting uh, topic and subject to minister from. And I pray that God will inspire you and uh, really minister to you in a phenomenal way as we continue in this exciting series of teachings. Let's just pray. Father, we thank you for uh, the word of the Lord. We thank you for a release that comes unto us, an activation, even concerning that of Zion, and that you would raise us up to be a people, Lord God, who would demonstrate the powerful attributes of those who meet you in Zion, but yet to be those who are acquainted with this God who makes Zion his habitation. I pray, Lord, for a revealing of you unto your people and a manifestation of, Lord God, your weighty presence even during this broadcast and that you would empower the saints and you would push us beyond that which is mediocre, trivial, and mundane. And there will come the surge of excitement and passion in us to be a people, Lord God, that you live among and a people, Lord God, that you dwell in the midst thereof. And from our lives, there will be a release of that which emanates glory and that which dictates movements even amongst people. We glorify you for that. We give you honor for that. And we bless you in Jesus' name. Well, let's go to the word very quickly. Psalm 102, verses 13 through 18. Thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Zion. For the time of favor, for the time of fa to favor her, yea, the set time is come. For thy servants take pleasure in her stones and favor the dust thereof. So shall the heathen fear the name of the Lord and all the kings of the earth thy glory. 
When the Lord shall build up Zion, he shall appear in his glory. He will regard the prayer of the destitute and not despise their prayer. This shall be written for the generation to come. And the people which shall be created shall praise the Lord. Now, these are some powerful verses, and I want to zero in on the favor dimension connected to Zion. There's a favor dimension connected to Zion, and then there's also a glory dimension that is connected to Zion. But we want to zero in on favor. I want to minister to you just for a few moments, and uh, <clears throat> I want you to look at this, that, that God is arising, and as he arises, that there's a descending of mercy that's coming upon Zion, God's kindness. And then there's an activation of a time. It's a set time, an appointed time that has been ordained to come. And when this appointed time comes, it's also going to cause a pleasure to manifest. And the stones in, the, in, in, in favor of even the dust of Zion is going to prevail. And the nations are going to fear the name of the Lord, the kings of the earth, his glory. So there's a reverence coming uh, because of God's name and then because of God's glory. And then in verse 16, when the Lord shall build up Zion, he shall appear in glory. And then you're going to find the destitute having their prayers answered and not despised. And this will be recorded for generations to come in people that God will create. So when you think about Zion, Zion is the dimension of, of a kingly people. The kingdom is from generation to generation. It's from everlasting to everlasting. But in this, in, in, in this aspect of Zion, we want to once again focus on favor. I want you to look at something with me very quickly. First Samuel chapter 2, verse 26. And the children... And, and the child Samuel grew on and was in favor both with the Lord and also with men. Luke 2.52. And Jesus increased in wisdom and in stature and in, and, and in, and in favor uh, with God and with man. So when you think about the Zion dimension, God does not just want to activate an appointed time, but he also wants you and I to grow in the context of favor. What is favor? Favor uh, paints a picture of preferred child status, of preferential treatment. Favor will give you a front-of-the-line pass. Favor will call you from the back to the front. Favor will call you from the bottom to the top. Favor will call you into a realm of supernatural appointments, supernatural encounters where preference is ministered under you. And I'm telling you, in Zion, that is where the favor of God is activated. He's arising in your situations. He's arising in your city. Don't you look to the pundits of the world and don't you look to people who simply are looking for some type of, of end time apocalyptic, some kind of crazy stuff to happen. I'm here, brother, and I'm going to live the fullness of what God has ordained. You are here. You need to just get your heart right and get it ready to live the fullness of what God has ordained because there's a time of favor. It's a set time and God is about to activate it in your life. When you think about the prophet Samuel, he grew during the time of reformation. There was all kinds of crazy things happening in Israel. The priesthood of Eli was under God's judgment. Uh, Eli had two sons who were very vile. Uh, they were practicing all kind of wicked things, but Samuel grew uh, under this wicked administration, uh, and the favor of the Lord was upon his life, uh, and he also had favor with me. And Jesus comes upon the scene uh, at a time uh, when Israel was under Roman occupation. There was all kinds of agony, uh, all kinds of religion prevailing, all kinds of challenges, uh, and the threat of doom. And we know uh, that the temple was going to be destroyed uh, by, the, uh, by the Roman emperor named Titus is during that time as well, but Jesus shows up uh, and Jesus grew in favor. And he just didn't grow in favor. He had favor with God and he had favor with me. And what am I saying? Uh, that when you deal with Zion believers, uh, time does not dictate uh, what you get what you get to enjoy. Uh, what am I saying? That when you get a revelation of Zion uh, as the habitation of God, where the Father will arise uh, and activate his mercy, uh, that God will begin to do things for you and I that are totally unprecedented, uh, that are totally uncommon, uh, that are outside the realm of logic in the minds of those who know not the true and living God. You get ready for that business to prosper. You get ready for that marriage to thrive. You get ready for that career to be catapulted into a place where promotion after promotion after promotion is going to come. You get ready of the demonstration of the sovereign one to hit your life and what would, what would cause mere man to be leveled and laid to waste. You're going to thrive and begin to increase and expand because the time of favor has come under Zion and God is about to do something of epic proportion in your life. Living in Zion 
assures the believer of having the favor needed uh, to righteously impact their sphere of influence. Uh, this favor is mandatory if you're a servant of God or you're sent by God uh, because in this dispensation of time, uh, many of us, God uh, has been dealing with us in the secret place uh, about pioneering new things. Uh, you need a creative dimension to come over your life. Uh, and one thing about favor, favor will open you up uh, to moments of creativity. Uh, don't despise it uh, when heaven begins to break into your living room as you're trying to go into a time of rest for the evening uh, and an encounter comes upon your physical tabernacle, yield to it because God is imparting uh, something inside of you uh, that is going to catapult you into a place of favor where preference is going to come over your life. Uh, and I decree uh, that for every one of you uh, where you have been overlooked in times past uh, that God is going to set his eyes upon you uh, and the favor of God is going to push you into a realm of breakthrough uh, and I'm telling you uh, that that, pr that pioneering anointing uh, is here because uh, there is so much faulty things in the earth realm. Uh, There's so much that is suspect uh, in the name of God, in the name of ministry. Uh, so many things that are out of order and anytime God activates pioneers, uh, there's a pioneering movement. Uh, you're sent by God to also bring reform. Uh, he's got to put favor on you because he knows that certain things doors won't open except he go before you and make the crooked places straight. He knows that except he doesn't, he opens the door that men would never let you in. You get ready for unusual things. I sense that happening for many of you, even ministries where you felt like you were going to have to start over and regroup. No, don't you worry about that. God is going to cause you to start big. That was the word of the Lord that was given unto me, my prophets in our church. And we're not starting over. Apostle, we're starting big. And I prophesy the genesis of favor hitting your life uh, and opening you up to options and opportunities uh, that will provide opulence for you uh, in this season. Don't you let the devil uh, get you out of whack. Don't you listen uh, to these doomsday preachers. Don't you listen uh, to these folk who are full of confusion and don't have a clue uh, as to what God is doing. Uh, in times of leanness, in times of indifference, uh, the favor of God always comes upon Zion. Uh, and I'm telling you, uh, this is your appointment for favor. In the book of Exodus chapter 3, verse 21, uh, this is interesting because it's giving us, it's giving us the narrative uh, of a people that God was about to bring out of 430 years uh, of oppression. Uh, it was God's firstborn uh, after the flesh according uh, to the word of the Lord that he gave unto Moses. Uh, that Israel as a nation was his first born singular and God was about to liberate them from captivity. Uh, their groanings and their cries uh, had penetrated the iron heavens uh, that was over the nation of Egypt uh, and broke through the unseen realm uh, and all of a sudden God remembers a promise uh, that he made to Abraham, to Isaac and to Jacob. Uh, it was an appointed time. Uh, it was a set time and they were about to come out uh, of 430 years of captivity. Are you listening to me? God sends a, a prophet named Moses uh, and through uh, the mantle of Moses, uh, judgment comes upon uh, the nation of Egypt through nine plagues uh, that activated all kinds uh, of, of destruction in that territory because God was willing uh, to go to the lynch. Uh, that prophetic word, uh, what needed to come to pass, uh, is synchronized with the corporate cries of those people uh, that God called his own and all of a sudden he started moving. Uh, brother in heaven and earth started shifting and I'm telling you, uh, we're in a moment now uh, where there's a corporate cry coming from the earth uh, for healing uh, from this evil virus, uh, for deliverance uh, from these spirits of racism and bigotry uh, and systematic slavery uh, and all kinds of, of institutionalized bondage uh, against people that is causing the world uh, to become unstable. I got good news for you. There's some folk who have been praying uh, and there's some prophecies that have been prophesied uh, and the culmination of an age has come. It's a set time. You watch the favor of God uh, hit your life. It's coming upon the righteous uh, and just like with Israel, uh, Exodus 3, 21, uh, and I will give this people favor in the sight of the Egyptians, uh, and it shall come to pass uh, that when ye go, uh, ye shall not go empty. Uh, and anytime God starts bringing people out, uh, and I prophesy your exodus, I'm coming out. Uh, you're coming out. Uh, we just not come out of anything, brother, just to say we're here. No, we're coming out uh, of one season uh, into an appointed time known uh, as a set time for favor, and that thing is going to hit your life. Uh, when you come out, you're not coming out empty, uh, and you're not going to come out void and destitute uh, of what you need need because in Zion uh, the prayers of the destitute are answered uh, and they are not despised uh, and God does it so a generation to come uh, and the people that are going to be created will know uh, that he is the Lord our God who favors uh, his inheritance. Uh, God tells them listen you're not going to come out empty. Uh, you see in Zion brother there are people there are people that God will put uh, substance in their lives uh, so that all of hell will know uh, what you did 
did uh, for years, what you did for generations uh, to try to level and destroy them, uh, I'm going to compensate them overnight. Uh, the powers uh, of their oppressors and the wealth uh, and the riches uh, and all the prestige uh, and the prominence thereof is going to come to my people. Uh, and I'm telling you, saints of God, uh, we're in a realm uh, where unprecedented things are about to happen uh, and the favor of God is going to hit your life. Uh, and it's not for an ill-prepared people. Uh, it's for folk that are prepared like Samuel as a child. He grew uh, and he, he grew. He was in the priesthood. He was in the temple. He was learning the ways of God. He began to grow uh, and God began to favor him just like Jesus. Uh, Jesus grew. Uh, he increased in wisdom and in stature and he had favor with God and man. And just like for you and I, you've been going through all kinds of oppression. You've been doing attacks. Uh, you've been doing sickness. Uh, you've been doing all kinds of battles against your mind. Uh, you've dealt with discouragement. Uh, you've had to battle your way through fear and depression. Uh, you've had to deal with lack and scarcity, but you are still here. And hell didn't take you out. Uh, and I'm prophesying the appointed time uh, for the favor of God to come upon your life. Uh, it's going to hit you overnight. Uh, it's going to push you into a realm of prominence. Uh, you get ready because God uh, is about to increase you. Uh, he's about to enlarge your steps under you. Uh, God is not a man that he should lie. He declared uh, that the faithful shall abound in blessing. Uh, I speak it over you. I decree it over you uh, because in Zion, uh, there's an appointed time of favor. You're not going to miss out on this appointment. Uh, I don't care what hell has tried to preoccupy you with. Uh, favor, favor, favor is coming upon your life. We got the word of the Lord uh, that is, we're coming out and we're not going to come out broke. Uh, we're not going to come out empty. Uh, I decree uh, that God will put enlargement in your heart uh, and he'll begin to increase your mind uh, to handle the magnitude uh, of what he's about to download in you. Uh, he'll increase your heart uh, so you won't get caught up in covenant righteousness and greed uh, and you'll be a supernatural dispenser under people and you'll bless and you'll impact uh, and you'll sow and you'll release uh, and you'll lend and not expect anything in return. Uh, I declare that that level uh, of savvy and acumen comes over you. Uh, why? Because in Zion is a place uh, where the throne of God is established uh, and it's from that place that God uh, begins to extend his scepter to his people uh, and the favor of God is coming on you uh, to come into a realm uh, of power, a realm of visibility and influence like you've never known before. I hear this, uh, that they have ministries and ministry gifts, uh, you don't have a name uh, because you sought to make his name known. Uh, you don't have uh, the influence that the world told you you should have uh, or the carnal church told you that you should have uh, or the secular preachers told you you should have, uh, but yet you've sought to make his name famous uh, and the Lord declares now I'm about to put some favor upon you. Uh, I'm about to put, put a level of weight upon you uh, and an administration uh, of my preference for you uh, that you're going to find yourself in places uh, around people uh, and provisions coming into your hands and walking in the purpose like you've never known before because the favor of God is about to hit your life. I declare that favor coming over you because any time there's a movement of heaven to liberate people, God always activates favor. I speak it over you. I declare it coming over you in Jesus' name. Here's another one I want you to look at at Nehemiah chapter 2 verse 5. He says, and I said unto the king, if it please the king, and if thy servant have found favor in thy sight, that thou wouldest send me unto Judah, unto the city of my father's sepulchres, that I may build it. Now the backdrop of this is that Nehemiah was still in Babylon. He was under he was under uh, the, the auspices of the king, uh, and he was the king's taste test dummy. Uh, he had a responsibility. When, whatever the king was going to drink, he had to drink it first. Uh, and Nehemiah, what a job, but his name means Yahweh is comforter, which means that he was bringing comfort to the king uh, because uh, Nehemiah didn't die. That means that what no death hits out on the king. Are you listening to me? Uh, sometimes you could be in a, in a position, uh, and you could be serving people, uh, and it's not consistent with your destiny in your eyes, but you got to realize uh, that there's an appointed time for you uh, because you are Zion. Uh, you are God's habitation. Uh, you are God's dwelling place. Uh, and Nehemiah, when he finds out what the what was happening in Jerusalem with his people, uh, it broke him down in his spirit. Uh, he begins to fast. Uh, he begins to weep. Uh, and he calls on God. Uh, and as he's communicating with God, uh, his request to God after he repented uh, that God would actually uh, use him to go uh, and bring restoration. Uh, and now he comes into the context of the king. Uh, and the king wants to accuse him of a conspiracy. Uh, but Nehemiah tells him, no, uh, it's not a conspiracy against you is because of the condition of my people. They're in a place and things need to be put in order. And so he tells the king, if it favors you, 
If I found favor in your sight, uh, and if it pleases you uh, that you would send me to Judah and unto the city of my father so I can build it. Uh, you see, anytime God raises you up uh, in a city full of desolation, uh, full of ruin, full of crime and violence uh, and all kinds of systemic poverty uh, and abject issues uh, that are overwhelming people, you need the favor of the king. Uh, and just like Nehemiah got the favor of King Xerxes uh, to go and build the city of his father, I prophesy the favor of the king of kings coming up upon you. Why? Because in Zion uh, it's your king's habitation uh, and there's an appointed time of favor. You've been servicing uh, your community. Uh, you've been doing well with, with what you have, uh, but yet God has enlarged your heart to do more and you're trying to figure out how it's going to come. Uh, it's going to be released through this mandate called favor. I prophesy favor coming over you uh, anytime God uh, uh, gives you a charge to build. you got to realize in Zion uh, there are builders uh, and there are architects uh, who live in Zion. Uh, they know the design Signs up and order of the king for his people. Uh, and so God has sent you to a populace of people. Uh, he sent you uh, to demographics of individuals in your city and you need the favor of God. Uh, you don't need a contact. Uh, you need favor. You got to realize that favor attracts contacts. Uh, that favor attracts resources. Uh, that favor attracts all you need. Uh, and there's a building dimension on your life because your commitment uh, has been for people. Uh, and God is going to give you favor in this hour. In Nehemiah, when he was sent by the king, uh, he had letters in his hand. Uh, that the governors of the other regions uh, had to let him have passage. Uh, and then he gave him a letter for a man named Asaph, uh, who was the keeper of the king's forest. Uh, and the king said, whatever you need uh, is on me. Uh, and I prophesy that the favor of God will come on you uh, and the Lord will activate financiers. Uh, you ministries uh, that, are, that have been, you've been raising money trying to build structures uh, to gather and assemble. Uh, and you're tired uh, of giving to the world. You're tired of renting and leasing. Uh, and the day of ownership is here. And God is about to do something phenomenal things for you in the area of land acquisition, uh, uh, property acquisition and ownership. Uh, why? Because uh, you have purpose to humble yourself uh, and you're in Zion, brother, and your appointed time has come. Uh, you've been hanging out on the backside for too long, uh, but you have been faithful serving. Uh, you have been faithful giving. Uh, you've been a faithful steward of what the Lord has given you. Uh, and now favor is about to activate this thing called multiplication. I, I prophesy it coming over your life. I, may the builders and the architects of Zion arise. I, may God give you insight to, into designs he's ordained uh, on how to develop people, uh, how to develop systems, uh, how to develop a generation, uh, how to build a city within a city uh, where God can make his abode in your midst. Uh, I declare that coming over you uh, in the name of Jesus Christ. Nehemiah was sent with the favor of the king uh, and he built that wall uh, and he dealt with mockers he dealt with scoffers, uh, but yet he had a wisdom upon him to rally the people together to get the job done. I, I declare that apostolic grace uh, that activates that finishing anointing, uh, it comes over you today uh, in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, and there's a grace uh, inside of these Zion builders as well, uh, where they understand the power of restoring breaches uh, and paths to dwell in. Uh, they helped to fortify the church from ruin uh, and desolation. Nehemiah got there and he saw the walls uh, in heaps. Uh, he saw the gates burn with fire and God God gave him a strategy, uh, and I declare that the heap of mess uh, and the desolation in your city, as you look upon it, uh, God will give you strategy, uh, and heaven shall inspire you with vision, uh, and the favor of the king of Zion uh, will come over your life. I'll loose it uh, over you in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's look at another one here. Es Esther chapter 5, uh, verses 1 and 2. Uh, now it came to pass on the third day uh, that Esther put on her royal apparel uh, and stood in the inner court of the king's house, over against the king's house, and the king sat upon his royal throne in, in the royal house, over against the gate of the house, and it was so when the king saw Esther, the queen, standing in the court, that she obtained favor in his sight. And the king held out to Esther the golden scepter that was in his hand. So Esther drew near and touched the top of the scepter. Now, the historical backdrop of this is that Israel, uh, uh, of course, was, about, was, was under the threat of an enemy, an ancient enemy known as Amalek. Going back to the days of, uh, of, of, of Moses, what's interesting that when Israel came out of captivity, there was a nation that attacked them known as the Amalekites. And God declared, I'm going to wipe them off from being of people on the earth. Amalek translates waster, exhauster, strangler, one who attacks from behind. And while Israel was in transition, Amalek attacked them. You know the story, Moses was on a mountain 
He sat on the rock, and then his arms were held, held up by Aaron and her, I believe, uh, or whoever was holding up his arms. Uh, and, 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 and as long as they held his arms up, Israel prevailed in battle, and God made a promise that day. You fast forward during the days of, uh, of, 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 of Esther, and she has an uncle named Mordecai, and there's a man named Haman. He was an Agagite. He was a descendant of Amalek, uh, the same people that God declared he was going to destroy. Uh, and Haman was plotting uh, and building gallows uh, to wipe Israel out uh, as a nation, uh, but Mordecai intercepts the plot of the wicked, uh, and he had groomed his niece Esther to be the king, she re to be the queen. She replaced a woman named Vashti, and now she she is in she's in the royal court. She is the queen, uh, but you couldn't come before the king without uh, an appointment. Uh, you see, Zion saints, uh, God activates appointed times for you, uh, and there's some people of royalty. Uh, there's some people of renown. Uh, there's some people uh, who are in places where you need to favor. You need them to release their favor, but it's not their favor. It's the favor of God because it wasn't even time to go see the king. But yet when he saw Esther, it was something about her life because she had been groomed by Mordecai, a prophetic and apostolic priest who understood the power of intercession. And he taught her how to prepare herself to stand before kings in the earth. And all of a sudden he extends a golden scepter. And she was brought uh, into his presence, uh, and she was able to articulate uh, what was happening uh, in, in the realm of her people. Uh, and as a result, the, Haim, the, the same plot that Haman had put together and the gallows built uh, to wipe God's people out, uh, he was hung on him himself. What am I saying? Uh, is that favor will come upon you uh, and the wicked plots of the enemy and things happening behind the scene uh, that are not visible to the natural eye because uh, the king makes Zion uh, his habitation, brother. It's a place he desires. His favor is there. And when he extends his scepter to favor you. Uh, it also activates his judgment uh, against adversarial powers uh, and against satanic forces. Uh, may the scepter of the king be extended over your city uh, and the plots of the evil one uh, and the plots of the wicked one uh, and the plans of hell to activate uh, even further carnage and violence uh, and civil unrest uh, and upheaval in our cities. Uh, may these powers come to naught uh, and may they be judged by the power of God uh, as the favor of the king comes upon you. May Zion arise and may the favor of the king be activated in the name of Jesus. Here's another one. Genesis chapter 6 verse 8. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Interesting uh, that grace correlates with favor. Now Noah, you have to realize there was a time uh, where people were doing everything contrary to the heart of God. Uh, they were marrying, brother. They were eating and drinking. Uh, they were just enjoying pleasure, but yet they had, walked, they, had, they had walked away from God. They were told that humanity was estranged from God, uh, and God uh, had sought to bring forth judgment on the earth. Uh, but then he finds this guy named Noah, and Noah finds favor in the eyes of God. Uh, it doesn't make a difference a uh, man of God, woman of God, what the wicked and the ungodly may do. God still loves them and in God's mercy when he, when he rules and reigns in Zion he will always look for Noah in the earth. Noah represents a type of a priest that God gives a blueprint to build something that will produce salvation in the earth. And God gave him a message to begin to preach it's going to rain. Now contrary to popular opinion it had never rained. So he's preaching something folk had never heard before. He's proclaiming a message that people and never experienced the fruit thereof. And he preached it for hundreds of years, I believe. And then all of a sudden, you know the story, the fountains of the deep broke open, the heavens opened, the rain came, and there was just a judgment that hit the earth. But prior to that happening, Noah's preaching and building. Let me encourage you, lead pastor. Let me encourage you, ministry gift. You may be having a, you have a troop that God has given you, and you ain't seen the fruit of this troop that God has given you. You keep on preaching, and you keep on building God's people. You found favor in his eyes just like Noah did uh, and something of epic proportion uh, is about to hit your life. What? Uh, you're going to find yourself constructing something uh, that God will use to bring salvation uh, in the earth realm. Uh, you see, in Zion, God sends those who he, fa who he favors uh, to preserve generations. Uh, you keep on preaching the fear of the Lord. Uh, you keep preaching holiness uh, and integrity. Uh, I don't care how raggedy folk are and how unethical things have become. Don't you let that cesspool uh, of satanic activity uh, manipulate you uh, into getting away from the strategy God has given you. Uh, why? Because uh, there's a preserving dimension uh, to the favor of God uh, that's about to be released to your life. Uh, 
You keep on preaching on family uh, and the welfare of marriages uh, and trusting God uh, to save folk children. Uh, you keep on raising that altar prayer uh, and you keep leading the charge of intercession. Uh, I don't care how the world mocks you uh, and I don't care how Satan's preachers mock you as well. Uh, these religious folk who could care less about God, uh, they just try, they just too uh, excited and too busy trying to build their own little empires. Uh, but I got good news for you. The very mockers and the sculptors of the work uh, that God has given you, brother, they're going to come uh, and look for a place of refuge. Why? Because in Zion uh, there's a blueprint uh, that's imparted under builders uh, to establish a stronghold uh, of salvation. Uh, and today I prophesy that blueprint coming uh, into clarity uh, that that blueprint comes into vision uh, and you will not miss God. Uh, there's a preserving dimension uh, that's about to hit your life. Uh, it requires wisdom to construct works uh, that are formidable uh, and not easily destroyed. Uh, and just like God gave Noah the kind of wood, uh, gave him the dimensions, gave him everything. Uh, you don't need to be schooled in this. Uh, you just simply need an impartation from the Holy Ghost uh, and an ear to hear the voice of God. Uh, I declare navigational wisdom coming upon you. Uh, and I prophesy prophetic insight uh, hitting your life and Noah constructs that ark uh, by the wisdom of God and that ark was used uh, during a time of judgment to preserve. Uh, why? Because in Zion, uh, God activates builders and architects uh, who understand the schematics of eternity uh, and what we be or what we teach, what we preach uh, has a direct impact on people, not a bunch a fluffer, not a bunch of hyper, not a bunch of turn to your neighbor, slap your neighbor, because you can't do none of that now. It got us in assemblies with masks on, looking like bandits and villains. You ain't going to be able to do none of that now. Turn and slapping folk, uh, turn to turn to five people, blow on, tell them God going to activate the breath of God. You can't blow on folk today, because uh, you're going to be in fist fights. Uh, it's going to be a full blown battle roar in the house of God. Uh, ain't doing that no more. Are you listening to me? Uh, you need wisdom for your generation. Uh, you need wisdom for the time that you're in, uh, because there's an appointed time uh, where the the favor of God comes upon Zion and I declare that God is raising up a Noah generation of apostolic and prophetic builders who are interpreting the schematics of heaven and what we build is going to preserve life. What we build is going to have a direct impact upon the quality of the lives of God's people but even the sinner and the saint are going to benefit from what you be or why because the love of God is also in Zion and God when he has us to build things it's for the whosoever wills. Uh, let them come. And I'm telling you, uh, you're about to see a surge uh, of increase. Uh, you're about to see a surge uh, and a supernatural influx uh, of multitudes of people who are looking uh, for this God who has made Zion uh, his habitation. Oh, hallelujah. Genesis chapter 39. This is our last point for this session. Genesis 39 verse 4. And Joseph found grace in his sight and served him. And he made him overseer over his house. And all that he had, he put into his hand. Now, this is powerful. Joseph was born into a household governed by gross dysfunction. His father had several litters of children from two sisters and then some handmaidens. And interestingly, Jacob was approaching a, a, a phase of life where um, he had things that were, uh, I'll be a greater reverence for God was rising in Jacob, which is Joseph's father. And Joseph found favor in his father's sight as well. He had favor with his dad and uh, there were things about his life. Joseph's name translates Jehovah is increased or Yahweh is increased. And interestingly, Joseph was destined to bring increase by way of his name. Name translates nature and character. And interestingly, God was about to do something phenomenal through his life, but it would come through an avenue of hardship and indifference because Joseph also is a type of the apostolic and prophetic. And one aspect of apostolic ministry, it actually correlates with a life of hardship and danger. When the, when the arduous task and duties of apostolic ministry are executed, and this is from the Greek word warfare, uh, where that word stradium, actually correlates with the definition I just gave you. So Joseph, because of jealousy and a lack of understanding of an appointed time, was put in a pit and sold into slavery by his siblings. They wanted to kill him, but Reuben, the most unstable of all the litters, said, we cannot kill him. We cannot do it. And interestingly, 
They sell him into slavery. He's escorted into Egypt, the epicenter of the world. And there's a king, the Pharaoh in Egypt. And Joseph comes into favor with this king. And all of a sudden, he serves him. Joseph is overseeing stuff. And the favor of God is upon his life. And we know that Joseph went through a time where he spent years in prison, but favor was on him. And favor got him back to the rightful position. And favor was, was, was the catalyst to help him preserve the nations of the world. What am I saying? Is that sometimes in life you can, you can be in an unfavorable predicament and the favor of God will still be on you. Sometimes you can be in a very disparaging moment in life. It's just a moment, but yet the favor of God is still working for you. Even when Joseph was in prison, he had favor among the keeper of the prison. And I mean, he was still interpreting dreams. He was still doing what he did. Don't you let your predicament or your momentary situation cause you to make decisions that will affect eternity in the wrong way and that will affect the people that God has called you to and assigned you to. Uh, favor for ruling in institutions of the world rests upon the citizens of Zion. What am I saying? Joseph, job was to bring increase. And so he interprets later on the dream of this king and he's brought into power out of prison from prison to the palace overnight. He interprets the dream and the king promotes him and no one in the land of Egypt was more powerful than the king uh, 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 of Egypt besides Joseph himself. And Joseph balances the budget of this economy that even during a time of leanness they could have abundance, surplus and increase uh, because Joseph's name means increase. The favor of God was upon him and I prophesy the favor of God coming over you, the favor of God coming over everything that God has assigned to your care and that God will cause it to increase, that God will cause it to be augmented, that God will cause it to be multiplied in abundance and you will know the goodness of God. In Zion, the king uh, doesn't send us for mediocre works. Uh, his favor assures us uh, that we will be in realms where things uh, of epic proportion take place. Uh, what am I saying? That Joseph uh, had a charge, a young boy sold into slavery uh, that was separated from his family as a teenager, had no idea of uh, what his destiny would be like uh, and what the totality of his life would culminate into. Uh, but yet he understood uh, the power of God's presence over him uh, and he knew he was sent by God. And when the time of restoration came with his family uh, when this gross famine uh, was in the land uh, and people from all over needed to come to Egypt just for basic necessities. Uh, Joseph uh, had pushed this nation into a realm of surplus uh, and abundance because the power of God was upon him uh, because you can't live in Zion brother and be broke. Uh, you can't live in Zion uh, and be scraping the bottom of barrels uh, and I'm telling you why because there's innovative ideas when favor comes upon you. Uh, there's wisdom for transactions uh, when the favor of God comes upon you. Uh, there are ideas that God would give you uh, that will garner massive amounts of wealth uh, in a short period of time. Uh, you don't have to strive to be rich. Uh, you just need to get the favor of God upon your life. And the king's favor is in Zion. Uh, this is your set time. Uh, it's an appointed time. Uh, and favor is about to hit you. And unusual things are about to transpire in your life. I prophesy that level coming over you. And just like Joseph, he balanced the budget. There were blessings and breakthrough. There was reconciliation and restoration. And they enjoyed God's goodness all their days during that time of famine. Even as it appears to be a time of famine in the nations of our world where businesses have shut down, where jobs have been lost. You need to know, child of God, that you are part of Zion. The King's habitation. You are part of Zion where the glory of God dwells. You are part of Zion where the favor of God is at. And there's an abundance of favor coming over you. I speak it over you. I prophesy. I declare the favor of God comes upon you in Jesus' mighty name. Well, my time is up. I bless God for you. I give God glory for you. I just hear the word of the Lord coming even now. The Lord declares that there's a changing not only of guards, but there's also a changing of mindsets. And the Lord says that there's a mentality that I'm imparting to my church for favor. I'm raising up Joseph types, apostolic and prophetic gifts, who will not only discern the time to know what needs to be done, but who will also escort my church and my people into appointed times where my favor shall come upon them. And you will know, O oh people of Zion, that the Lord your God prefers you. That preferential treatment from the sovereign one has come upon you. I hear the Lord saying, even many of you have testimonies now of how my hand has kept you and my goodness has caused you to flourish 
even in these days. For the Lord says, oh, that which is coming during this appointed time shall pale in comparison to the thing that has already been done. You will know my goodness, my favor. You will know the power of my scepter as I extend it unto you. You will know the wisdom of the ancient for appointed times. And I give you understanding of times. Hey, the Lord saying that I'm raising up prophets in this season who will have keen awareness of not just the times of men, the times of tragedy, and times of judgment, but they will discern the appointments of favor. And they'll begin to prophesy. And they'll begin to give vision and strategy and wisdom on how to thrive and how to excel, saith God. I hear this so clearly that there's coming such a level of significance within the ministries of those that have given themselves to study even the trends of men. And I'm giving you insight. And I'll give you wisdom for transactions as you've never known before. And favor shall be upon you. Favor shall be the means of your transactions. And you, you will know what it means as Isaiah prophesied, Lo, and come and buy with no money. For favor shall be strong. And my word shall be mighty in the midst of thee. And my spirit shall be upon you in an unusual way. And doors shall open. And I will give you wisdom for movements. And favor shall prevail. And you'll build, you'll construct. You will summons and you will gather. You'll liberate and you'll cause many to come out. And it shall be a work of favor, saith God. Favor for deliverance. Favor for freedom from captivity. Favor to be in the right place at the right time. Favor to build and construct that which I will live inside of and I'll use to save. So I speak this over you. And I release this under you, saith God. And navigational wisdom for your times comes strong upon you. It's in the lips of your prophets, O Zion. I'm changing the trajectory of the prophets' ministry. And there is coming such a level, I keep hearing this, of keenness and insight and transference of substance and acquisition of wealth and abundance to my people. And you will have what you need for a time to come, saith God. So think it not strange that I deal with you for consecration. I deal with you for sensitivity. I deal with you for spirit-inspired living. I deal with you for reconciliation and exploits of forgiveness. I deal with you for times of repentance, weeping and fasting. Because there's a release and a surge of favor coming upon you, said the Spirit of the living God. So, Father, we bless you. And I thank you, Lord, for this people, even Zion. And I declare divine appointments, set times, ordained times, for the preference of the Lord to come over us, that it be upon our houses, that it be upon our tabernacles, that it be upon the dwellings of the righteous. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you, people. Receive the favor of God. Receive the word of the Lord. You prophets in particular, you trust God for a word of situational wisdom, for supernatural transactions that will open up portals of wealth and unlock secret treasures and hidden riches. These things are in the earth. It is the heart of the king for us, even the king of Zion. So I bless you. I bless you. Let your endeavors be blessed. Let your ideas be blessed. Come into your own, O Zion. And know the goodness of our God. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. God bless you. We'll see you next week. Rivers Chicago would like to thank our members, partners, and friends who sow into the work of building the house of prayer. We trust that this is good soil and pray that fruit is abounding to your account. We need you to stay tuned as we are about to give electronically. You can do this via Zelle, Cash App, Text to Give, and you can also send your checks to our P.O. Box. All of our platforms are on the screen. I'd like at this time if you would hold your seat before the Lord and help me confess corporately. You ready? Let's go. Father, we declare that you alone are the source for River Chicago and our partners around the globe. We decree you provide all we need above and beyond. We confess the consistent flow of finances 
They come into these houses and we decree that you multiply every seed that's sown into rivers. We decree you are the God of supply and every need that's present and before us, you are supplying through the power of seed sown into this ministry. Lord, we confess that you are causing all grace to abound towards us and abundance is our portion. We prophesy large amounts of finances are deposited into Rivers accounts weekly and we decree that every financial endeavor of God's people are met above and beyond. We decree phenomenal returns come to us as we adhere to the biblical principles of giving and sowing into the work of the kingdom. We decree the financial seeds we've sown to the nations, to the disenfranchised, to the poor, to the needy. They come to us again multiplied. We decree that we are satisfied with favor and we are full of the blessing of the Lord. We decree excellence and stewardship over our membership, friends, and partners around the globe. And we decree increase on all finances that come unto us. We declare rivers is a place of perpetual supernatural harvest in the mighty name of Jesus. Hey, we want to thank you for being a part of our online worship experience. Have a phenomenal week and we'll be back with you real soon. Kingdom blessings. Strength.